Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm very happy that you are here with me today. We have a bunch of stuff going on. I don't know how much we're going to get to on my list, but I have an ambitious list for today. The first thing that we're going to do is wait until my dryer stops beeping. It has a very long um, alarm for when a load is finished. It just keeps going on and on. It sings a merry little tune. I'm actually kind of grateful for that alarm though because it goes on long enough that it actually grabs my attention. It's hard to block out <laughs> and it reminds me to go down and actually switch my wash because my washer and dryer are downstairs. But needless to say, it is done now. So we are going to, what are we gonna do first? I think what we'll do is go down to the pantry. I haven't decided what to make for dinner tonight. So I thought we would go down and just kind of look at what I have available and then make a decision about what to make for dinner tonight. The other thing that I need to do is a stock up on my pre-made uh, seasoning mixes that I have. So in my cookbook, in a section called Nana's Spice Blends, we have a whole bunch of different spice blends and I am running low or out of most of them. So we are going to do that. We're going to make a chai tea blend that I love. All purpose seasoning, apple pie spice and pumpkin pie spice. If you have my cookbook, they are available in my cookbook. I do have a digital copy of my cookbook currently available on my website. And Amazon has a few copies that it's selling right now um, that you can get if you're interested in a hard copy. We normally sell our hard copies directly through our website, but there was a bit of a glitch with the publisher. So we now have them available on Amazon for as long as they have stock, which hopefully is not for too long, and then we'll be carrying them back again in our own shop. But for right now, that's where you can get them. If you wanna grab a pen and paper though, I'll be giving all the measurements for all of these and you can just copy them down from this video as well. But first, let's head down to the pantry and see what we're gonna make for dinner tonight. I am really happy where everything is at in my pantry right now because we are six days into the second month of the pantry challenge where we're not going to the grocery store for a couple of months. And we are getting some nice looking gaps, which actually I'm happy to see because this pantry was so packed full uh, with food that we put up over the summer. And the whole point of this food is to actually consume it. So seeing these gaps in the shelves is a good thing. But I am also happy to see that there's still lots of food left in here. My canned goods need to last, well, I guess it depends on what we're talking about, but tomatoes, for instance, all the tomato products that you can see, they need to last us all the way until we can start harvesting tomatoes in large amounts again in August. So I definitely have enough to last us till then potatoes into the fall. I obviously don't have enough to last us into the fall, but I still have lots left in the root cellar. And then all of the pickles and all of that kind of stuff, I like to last us for around a year. So I think we're in good shape as far as that goes. I still have tons of spices and seasonings and herbs that I put up over the summer months as well. So that will do us until we have fresh stuff again. This is what we call our store-bought pantry. And in this pantry, we are still looking really good. I don't think that we're going to run out of anything, which feels fantastic. Actually, that's not true. We are running low on brown sugar. We hardly have any brown sugar left, but I do have lots of white sugar and lots of molasses so I can make brown sugar if we need it. So really, I am super happy with this. So one of my main goals, I'm sorry the lighting is so bad in here, but um, one of our main goals for the pantry challenge was to be able to see how long the food that we had stored would actually last us if we weren't able to go to the grocery store at all. We call this our one year pantry, both of these pantries and our freezers, uh, because a lot of the food in here is intended to last us for one full year, but that's with supplementing with trips to the grocery store every week or two for uh, buying other ingredients that we need or keeping the pantry stocked and things like that. So it's not intended to be a one year pantry and without those stops to the, or those trips to the grocery store or the every three month trips that we make to Costco to keep things stocked up. But I did really wanna know and so did Dan, how much all of this food or how long all of this food would last us if we weren't going to the grocery store. And we're both feeling really inspired and it has increased my confidence quite a bit 
to know that we have months worth of food left if we could only be eating out of our freezers and our pantry. It would get a little boring, <laughs> there's no question about it, but we could exclusively eat out of, the, out of the food that we have here for a fairly extended period of time, which gives me a lot of added security that I didn't really have before. When we first started doing this challenge, a lot of people felt that it was unwise to uh, go through so much of our food storage right in the thick of winter before because we're not going to start getting produce and things out of our garden until June. But I actually don't feel like that at all. I feel like this was the perfect time to do it. I feel like it's a very honest um, test of our food reserves and I feel like we've learned more about our food, our food storage, even our spending habits than we really understood before. So I have zero regrets. Dan and I will sit down again at the end of this month and kind of give you a roundup of our everything that we learned, the amount of money we saved and all of that. And then we'll probably take you through a th or for another tour because we did a pre-pantry tour or pre-pantry challenge tour. So we'll do a post one and just um, share with you what we actually ate for this entire two month period, which is pretty crazy. But now I've talked long enough, let's find out what we should make for dinner tonight. There's a few things that I have been wanting to use up. Beans is one of them. So I'm thinking that I might make a pork and bean, like a baked pork and bean recipe. I do have some canned uh, pork and beans over here that are actually really good. I was really happy with the way these turned out But I like to save this kind of stuff for when I don't have a lot of time to cook So I think we'll make a mix. We'll use pinto beans We'll throw some black beans in there and a few kidney beans in there as well So I keep my beans stored in these bins here and do you know what I just realized is I didn't bring down anything to put them in so I'm gonna go grab the insert out of my Instant Pot and I'll just measure right into there. What do we have here? So we have our lentils, pinto beans are back here. some navy beans too. Okay, oh, you know what else I need to use up? Is some squash. So, you know what we should do? So let's grab, oh, that squash is starting to get a bit soft. Let's grab some squash and we'll have some squash on the side. We'll do, yeah, we'll just do the acorn squash. So where do I have my kidney beans? Aha, I wish I could ask you guys, hey, did anyone see where I put my measuring cup? There it is. <laughs> Kidney beans in there. We also need a couple onions and I need to find where I put my navy beans because <laughs> I don't see them in bins. I'm thinking maybe I need to open up a new bag. So my onions are up here so we're going to grab a bunch of these onions. Okay we have some onions and some garlic. Have another couple cloves. There they are. There, that should do us. That would make a nice mix. Something that makes really nice beans is apple juice. So I'm just gonna grab a couple of these because I don't have a bigger one. <laughs> and we'll use that. So that and some squash. And we are good to go. I am, by the way, planning on putting cupboard doors on these two. Um, cupboards on the island. I was kind of hesitating on it only because they are staying so much more organized without cupboard doors on them, but I just don't like the way it looks. <laughs> so I, I am gonna put the cupboard doors on those. We have our apple juice over here, onions, garlic, and our beans, which I am going to wash. So I'm going to add some seasonings to this, but most of the seasonings I will add into the barbecue sauce that I'm gonna make that will go in this. So we're just gonna add some paprika. This is just to flavor our beans a little bit. Some chili powder, good bit of salt. 
our apple juice. I'm just gonna rinse these off too because they were just sitting in the pantry and they're a bit dusty. I'm gonna throw these in after they've been rinsed off, but skins and all, and a clove of garlic in there too. Okay, now we're just gonna top this off with a bunch of water. I'm gonna fill it right up to the max water line or fill line on here. And then we're gonna set it onto the bean setting and let it do its thing while we're making all of our uh, seasonings over at the other table. I'm gonna set it for 45 minutes just to make sure that those kidney beans get nice and soft. There is a slight disadvantage of mixing beans together like I just did where they're different sizes and different densities because the ones that cook up faster like the pinto beans and the navy beans will be a lot softer than the kidney beans because we need to pressure cook it for the amount that I need for the kidney beans to be soft. So um, for pork and bean kind of thing that I'm making today, that's not a huge issue uh, and because I like them nice and soft anyway for this recipe. So I think it'll work out just fine. Okay, now we're gonna mix up all of our seasoning mixes. I also wanted to make another batch of soap today because my family and I are so happy <laughs> with this soap that I made. And so now we're using it all over the house and all the bathrooms and the kitchen. And I got these little trays. These are just teak wood um, on Amazon so that my soap does not disappear on me sitting in water. So I needed to make, I want to make another batch of soap though, because I think we're going to work through this soap fairly quickly and it does take a couple of months for soap to cure. So if we have time, I am going to put together a quick batch of soap and I'm just gonna use the same recipe I used last time since everyone was really happy with it. The first that I, the first recipe that I'm going to make is Thai spice and we are going to need, we're gonna need a teaspoon is what we're gonna need. So we need four teaspoons, oh, my spoon doesn't fit in there, of cardamom. Cardamom mm, smells so good. Three tablespoons of ground cinnamon. I just remembered that Denise, who is a longtime subscriber here of my channel, sent me some Cylon cinnamon that would be really good in this, I can imagine. I've already used it, um, and there's just no comparison between this and the regular plain Jane cinnamon that I usually buy. It smells so good and has such great flavor, so we'll use this in our tea. So we need two teaspoons of ginger. one teaspoon of allspice, half a teaspoon of cloves. And like with all of my recipes, you can adjust these according to the way you like things to taste. Half a teaspoon of anise, mm, that smells good. And a half a teaspoon of mustard powder. Did I put the nutmeg in? I don't think I did, I didn't, I missed the nutmeg. We need a teaspoon of nutmeg too. So we're just going to put a lid on this and then give it a good shake. You can use this just as it is if you want to have a caffeine-free chai. And just use um, some steamed milk. I'll make up a cup in a minute and show you. Or you can add your favorite black tea to it as well and then just add a teaspoon of this if you want a little bit of black tea flavor in there. So that's that all mixed up. Now we're gonna move on to our next one, which is going to be, I think we'll do all of the um, kind of sweet ones first. So we're gonna do apple pie spice. For this, I'm just gonna use my regular old cinnamon. So we're gonna do two tablespoons of cinnamon, one tablespoon of ginger, two teaspoons of nutmeg, half a teaspoon of cloves, and a teaspoon of allspice. And we have our apple pie spice. So you know what I'm gonna need to do though, is make sure that I get a pen, because these are all similar in color. 
and mark them. So we have chai, have apple spice. As far as the apple spice and the pumpkin pie spice that I'm going to make, I use those to flavor muffins all the time. Um, to sprinkle on top of homemade hot chocolate on the whipping cream on top. Uh, where else? Uh, for making like banana bread or anything like that, I'll usually add a little bit of that in there to replace if it calls for cinnamon. I'll use either one of these spice mixes as well. They are very tasty. So do you know what I just realized? Is I had actually been mixing up the pumpkin pie spice, not the apple spice <laughs> in this one. So this one is pumpkin pie. These jars are a little bit overkill for the size I need. Uh, use half pint jars for these recipes. So now for our apple pie spice, we're going to use two tablespoons of cinnamon. That looks about right. One tablespoon of nutmeg. One teaspoon of ginger. and a half a teaspoon of cloves. I've also been sharing these recipes over on Instagram. So if you're on Instagram, if you go on to my main page, you'll be able to find these on there as well. If you don't, or if you haven't written them down or you just want an easier way to be able to save them, that is another option. So we're gonna lid this one up again. Another good shake. And we have our next one. All right, last up, all-purpose seasoning. Two tablespoons of garlic. Two tablespoons of, whoops, of onion powder. One teaspoon of black pepper. One teaspoon of salt. So I need two tablespoons of tomato powder and I don't currently have any tomato powder made, but I do have some sun-dried tomatoes here. So I am going to open up this bag of sun-dried tomatoes. What am I going to open it with? With this knife right here. And I'm going to grab a few out of here and I'm going to mix these or grind these up in my Vitamix to add to this. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna make a larger batch more than I need so that I have some in my cupboard. So now I am just going to go seal this back up again so it's good to go in my food storage. So before I take my Vitamix out, I'll just add the rest of the ingredients to this as well. So we are going to need a teaspoon of crushed bay leaves. So I am just going to Mix those up in the Vitamix as well. Tablespoon of dried parsley. Where do I have parsley? There I have it. Tablespoon. This calls for half a teaspoon of rosemary. I am out of rosemary, which is very odd. Um, I think probably because I used fresh rosemary all throughout the summer. And then in the fall, I pulled my rosemary plant out and brought it inside and tried to overwinter it. I was not successful. I killed it. <laughs> I'm, I have very rarely ever been successful overwintering rosemary. So I killed my rosemary. I did use all the rosemary that was on it, but I didn't actually store any for over the winter, which I will not repeat that mistake again next year. So either way, this is going to be sans rosemary. We need a teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of basil. Mm. Basil smells so good. A teaspoon of thyme. This also calls for dried lemon and dried orange peel, both of which I do not have, so I will be omitting those. This is a like an Italian all-purpose seasoning when done the way that I'm doing it today. So now let's get these bay leaves going. Okay, I'm just gonna whip up these bay leaves first. Okay. Plunk those in there. Throw our tomatoes in here. Sun dried, these are sun dried, freeze dried tomatoes. Okay, and we need two teaspoons of our tomato powder. 
And I'm just gonna put the rest of this tomato powder in a separate thing so that I have some. Lid and shake. I keep uh, used lids in this drawer here so that I have them for exactly this purpose. So there we go. Now we have some all purpose seasoning. Now I am all stocked up again with these delicious seasonings. And I'm gonna keep the chai out so that I can make a chai for you and show you how I do it. And my tomato powder too. First, we're gonna lit up that. So I'm just going to clean up this mess here and assemble all of my soap making stuff and we will make some soap. I like mixing my lye outside just because of all the fumes. I'll give you all of the measurements when we go back in the house. Just gonna mix these until it is all dissolved. And I was also wearing goggles too, just in case I splashed. So set our gloves aside there. So now we're just going to let that cool down and let me tell you what the measurements were. And I'll link the recipe that I'm using down below as well. So nine ounces of distilled water to 4.16 ounces of lye or sodium hydroxide. And I'm using this kind here. So now we are going to let that cool down to around 90 to 115 degrees of Fahrenheit or so. And then we're gonna mix all our oils and stuff together. And I'll let you, um, or I'll share with you the measurements of that when we get to that point. Okay, friends, we are ready to do the fun part. So when our live solution is between 90 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which it just about is, we are going to mix it into our warmed oils, which I have over here. It says you don't have to have the oils and lye solution at the same temperature. It's okay if they are a little bit different. We're gonna use our immersion blender to mix everything up. And we have for our oils that we're going to be using. So we have 22 and a half ounces of olive oil. Here we have 7.5 ounces of coconut oil, a half a teaspoon, a teaspoon of cocoa butter that I'm gonna add once we get to trace. We're going to add some patchouli and we are going to add some lavender the same as we did last time. A half a tablespoon of ground oats, which I have here, and a teaspoon of melted honey. So we have half a teaspoon of warm water here and I'm just gonna add half a teaspoon of honey to this as well. Give that a mix. Okay, I'm gonna put the honey and the water in with our butter. Here we go. I'm still a little bit nervous doing this because this is relatively new to me. I've only done it one other time before. So we're gonna get my goggles again, my gloves. I'm going to add our warmed oils to here. Gonna add in our little bit of oats. Okay, we're almost there. So now we're going to add a half a tablespoon of essential oils. Okay, we're just about at trace. So you can you see how it's thickening up? A little tiny bit further. Aha, there we go. Now we have trace. Okay, I'm gonna let these set up. And uh, last time it only took, I think it was about six hours or something like that for them to set up so that I could take them out. And I wanna show you that because it's very satisfying popping the soaps out of here. So I will see you when these are ready to pop out. All right, friends, I was hoping I was going to be able to show you popping out the soap, but it's taking a little bit longer to set up. So I'm gonna have to wait and do that tomorrow, which I might film and share with you. But in the meantime, I do have our beans done over here and is that hot? No, it's not too bad. So we have a very full batch of beans. I'm going to go grab my large Dutch oven and some barbecue sauce out of the pantry. I forgot to grab that when we were down there and we're going to get this all mixed in together and then I'm just going to put it in the oven on low 
and it will be ready for supper. And one of my kids wants to make cornbread, so he's going to make cornbread a little bit later to go with these baked beans for dinner. And it already smells so good. Okay, I'm just gonna pull out my onions here. Dan is being goofy behind the camera, as usual. <laughs> Everyone thinks you're a serious kind of guy, but I know better. I know what you're really like. So I'm just gonna give these a quick drain and drain out extra liquid that's in there. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I find when I pre-cook my beans before I'm gonna use them in a recipe and then I give them a good rinse, they don't tend to upset our stomachs as much or produce as much gas as they do otherwise. So, giving you a little Alex update. She is, her looks are deceiving. She looks really sweet and she seems really sweet right now. <laughs> But she is She's she, pouncing on my face at four in the morning. <laughs> she was trying to get in underneath the blankets. She likes to sleep under the blankets. Yeah, and we weren't letting her in and so she was like pouncing on her face until we until we let her in. You're being you seem pretty like just, oh, well actually I need to wash my hands now because I'm yeah. in the middle of cooking. <laughs> right now. Okay, see ya. Okay, we are gonna plunk our beans in here. And I pulled out that garlic and that onion if I didn't show you that already and all oh right bacon so i'm going to add the fried up bacon here it's around a pound of bacon or so and i'm also putting the bacon fat in there too for some extra flavor and what i might end up doing is frying up a couple onions and throwing these in here it's going to have the onion flavor from um using or from the onions that I threw in there when it was cooking in the instant pot but I think I might want some extra onion flavor so this is homemade barbecue sauce from this past summer when I canned it I'm gonna add some molasses into this around a quarter cup or so maybe a little bit more and a splash of vinegar to give it a little bit of a tang, a little bit of cane sugar. Now we're gonna stir this in and then I'll give it a taste and decide at that point what else it's going to need. Okay, let's give this a taste. That is delicious, just like it is. But I know that some caramelized onions will just elevate it even that much more. So that's what it looks like there. This is obviously a giant pot. So I'm just gonna put this in the oven at 200 to let all of those flavors meld together and then I'll fry up some onion. Add that in there and with the cornbread, it will be just perfect. So now I think we should have a chai tea to end this day. So I'm just gonna heat up some milk and I'm going to use some whole milk with lots of cream in it. Isn't that a beautiful mug? This was a gift to Dan from his mom, I think at Christmas actually. So we're going to add a teaspoon of our chai. Always give things a shake when you make homemade powders like this just because it can settle in there it's after three so i am not going to add any black tea to this so we heat up and froth our milk up a little bit i just use a whisk to froth it up because i don't have a frother and i should mention that you can use whole spices for these like the cardamom and the anise and um, you'll probably just need to play around with the measurements a little bit because they're going to be different than when they're ground like the one that i've just made and then you can put all of those uh, spices right into your milk and just simmer it on the stove for a little while i'm not needing to do that in this case because like i said this is already all ground it's just like a powder and just for fun we're gonna add a little pinch of which one? I think we'll do our pumpkin pie spice. We'll use a pinch of this on the milk on top. There we go. Oh, 
That is really, really tasty. You know what this would be really good with too? Is homemade hot chocolate, a couple scoops of this mixed in with the homemade hot chocolate. Mm. I just wanted to show you what I would do if I was looking to strain out the little um, kind of grainy bits that can be in this. I don't mind them at all. Like it's, it's fine for me, but the cardamom is a little bit uh, gra granuly, gra granuly, grainy, I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, just you can just get one of these and put it in over top of your cup and then dump it right through. And you can see in there that most of that gets strained out. So you might like to come with me to wind down today's video and go and check on our sheep. Our sheep are due to lamb anywhere between now and the end of the month, even the beginning of uh, March, possibly. So we'll go down and take a look at them. I am checking them a couple of times a day just to keep an eye on them. But fortunately, the weather is absolutely perfect for lambing. It's very warm outside, so we're not, and it doesn't look like we're going to get any severe cold snaps, which is absolutely fantastic. That's what I was worried about as far as lambing in February. But my plan was to put them in the barn with some supplementary heat and yada yada, but now I'm not gonna have to do that, which is awesome. So I'm just gonna grab my jacket and we'll head out. I just realized it's going to be a little tricky to carry the camera and my tea at the same time. So I guess my tea is gonna have to stay inside. We got a little bit of a skiff of snow last night. It's actually been completely snow free here for the last week and a half or so, but it's now got a little bit of a dusting. I'm excited because with this warm weather, we're having, we are going to be able to start doing some of the upgrades on the greenhouse, the high tunnel and the greenhouse we're doing some upgrades on this year and we'll bring you along with us for that. But that means we get to get outside and do some outdoor projects. And I'm so excited about it because normally we have to wait well into March to be able to work outside. And because the ground is so dry uh, and we have had very little snow, we're probably not going to have a lot of mud this spring. That's concerning for a whole bunch of reasons, but it will make working outside a lot easier because usually we have pretty insane mud in the spring. I'm really hopeful that we have good lambing this year because uh, last year we, we bought our sheep in February of last year and we ended up having a stillborn lamb and one of my other sheep died um, shortly before giving birth. And so we didn't get any lambs last year. So I'm really hopeful that this year is going to be a better year. Hi everybody. No lammies yet, hey? So this is the only one that I think may not be bred. It's hard to tell because obviously she has so much um, wool on her. But that girl over there, her and this little lady over here are most definitely bred. You can see how round she is. But her, I'm just not so sure about. She is my favorite. I hope to get a lamb out of her because in all likelihood, this is our ram that we would end up with a chocolate colored baby out of her. With these guys, who knows, we could get white ones or we could get chocolate ones like this boy. <laughs> Isn't he handsome? So you can see how big she is and her. She's looks like she maybe has twins. And then this girl in comparison to her, she just does not have the big bumps out the side like these girls do. So I am not sure if she is not bred, then that probably means that she is not able to be bred because she has been in with this guy all the way since September and she should most certainly be bred now. But like I said, it's kind of hard to tell uh, with sheep. So we'll just wait and see. But these three ladies definitely look like they're gonna have babies. You guys are so cute. I'm really excited because um, where we normally have our sheep in the summertime or where we had them last year, this is only our going to be going into our second year with them is in a big pasture, a hot wired pasture down over this way. But I got some new fencing from Princess Auto. I got a new solar charger and some new hot wire. So we're going to make portable pens for them so that we can move them around the property. I did buy some sheep and poultry netting that I was planning on using with these guys, but it worked so well for raising our meat birds that we're going to use that for raising the meat birds and try out this single hot wire, except we'll put three strands for these guys and see if we can get them clearing some of the area that we want to have cleared um, a little bit more easily. And then we're going to put them in some of the areas that we want to have with the underbrush cleared out. 
Um, they're not like goats where they'll, where they'll eat a lot of the trees and leaves off the trees and shrubs and things like that. They will to a certain extent. They're more grazers where they graze on the ground and eat all the grasses. But I have lots of areas like that that need to get cleaned out too. So that is going to be it for today's video, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye. Bye guys.